if anyone is here tonight that wasn't here uh, last Friday, uh, we do have that. It is on uh, YouTube, and uh, it is pretty much going to be uh, part of a three-message series that's going to be part of the process uh, of membership uh, as we start having new folks joining us instead of reinventing the wheel uh, and having to uh, keep holding classes every three months or every six months or whatever the case may be uh, we'll have a, a playlist and, and a time of you know uh, a learning that way uh, for new members to have an opportunity to see what we're all about and um, what the, the vision is and who we are and what we do. So uh, tonight and the next Friday, uh, we'll be recording service uh, to be part of of that. And then uh, probably, hopefully, <laughs> we, we won't see it here for quite a while after that. Uh, like I said, I'm not a big fan of it, but it seemed like a, a necessary thing. Uh, so, you know, so tonight, we'll, we'll, I'll be doing the parish uh, at the end. Um, you know, we definitely miss uh, having you know Jimmy and Rennie and, and Donna and, and the others that are out uh, but when you're not feeling good you stay home <laughs> and, he, and Jimmy was kind of feeling better and went back to work but uh, you know with Rennie not being uh, not being well we didn't want to bring in anything here but it was his week to do uh, parish up and it's just you know don't wish anything on anybody. I'm, I'm, I'm glad he's feeling better um, and, and would love to have him here. But again, everything happens for a reason. It's, it's kind of kind of interesting how things work out. And you know, we've looked at the parasha or parashiot in, in the past, and we've talked in depth that on how each parasha is divinely inspired, not only the portion that it is, um, but the time of year that it's red, it's divinely inspired. There's windows of heaven, uh, if you will, that are open, uh, special connection points, uh, special blessings uh, that are connected with these things. So if, you know, if you're know, if you not a regular studier um, of the parasha on Shabbat or any other time, I highly encourage you to do that. And speaking of Jimmy, uh, up here, uh, he got, uh, I guess they're from First Fruits of Zion, the uh, the weekly parasha for the whole year so you'll know exactly uh, what the portion is and uh, you know and you'll be able to, to follow along and also on our website myroic.org on our blog uh, we post uh, every Friday and it's uh, I'm realizing that we uh, are a little late putting uh, today's up but you know the parasha that I write uh, are there every week as well so make sure you uh, avail yourself of that i'm going to be doing it at the end of service tonight though uh, just because again as it turns out on the ride in here was just looking at it one more time and realized the connection to what the lord had planned here uh, tonight and it's kind of strange and cool all at the same time how these things kind of work together and fit together, you know, and uh, so I, I thought it would be best to do it at the end of service tonight, uh, so uh, you guys see the connection. So my goal tonight, and I'm not much of a motivational speaker uh, or anything like that, but my job tonight is to help cast the vision uh, for the congregation uh, going forward tonight always find it funny that you got a blind guy with no sight going to be telling you about vision. But of course, vision is uh, not physical and, and tangible sometimes. Uh, but I want to share where we're headed, what the plan is, and to be certain, it's not my vision. This is the vision Rabbi Cliff uh, shared with me very many years ago uh, when we met and what his heart's desire was and something inside of me just instantly was like, wow, yes, that's, that's, that's what I want to be part of. And I'm hoping and praying that uh, it's something inside of you leaps uh, as well. And he had shared it in, in the past uh, here, 
but the reason I'm going to be doing is number one, to re refresh uh, all of us so we have a clear vision of, of where we're headed, uh, where I believe we're headed, where Rabbi Cliff believes we're headed, um, and, um, and tried to kind of think, okay, well, how do we get from where we are now <laughs> to where he envisioned us and where I believe we are absolutely still supposed to, to go? You know, just because he passed doesn't mean we just erase everything and just start a whole new weird or different thing. Uh, you know, uh, we were a team, you know, he, he, he was the shepherd and, and he heard from God and, and God had him, you know, very thankfully, uh, you know, bring me under his wing, under, under his, uh, under his delete, uh, quite literally. And, uh, to, to, to carry out the, the plan, God's plan, because ultimately it, it is God's plan. God put it in Rabbi Cliff. It wasn't just something he just, you know, on a Saturday morning, sitting in the recliner, and just said, "Hey, I, this sounds good." No, it was it was it was an inspired thing. God God spoke it to his heart, and uh, and, sp and spoken it to mine. So, so tonight I want to go through this. We'll look at some scriptures uh, that are are necessary and tie into this, and we'll we'll close out with the uh, parsha. And then next week we are going to conclude this series looking at specifically the ministry side, what we are going to do uh, for the Lord with everything um, that we have, everything that we know, everything um, that God has put into us uh, locally and literally around the world. Uh, I believe there are some big things coming. Do not be deceived that, oh, we are just a tiny group or, oh, we're only this many, or, you know, how could we possibly ever afford that or, or be able to do this? Because things, you know, take money, and, you know, we're not looking to, to squeeze blood from a stone. Is that how that, <laughs> that, that saying goes? But, but I, I'm a man of great faith. God has done some amazing things in, in, through uh, me and my life and my walk with him and, and my wife and, and family as well. And, uh, you know, I'm just crazy enough to trust God uh, that he is not a man that he should lie and that he is big enough uh, for the task that he's put in us to carry it out. Amen? Amen? So what is it? What are we talking about? Rabbi talked about a day that he dreamed of that the congregation would grow to a certain size where we would have financial means to do kingdom work. Uh, he was never concerned about, you know, uh, being one of these preachers that were, you know, the popularity guys that, you know, tickled the ears and, and drew people in to make them feel good and, and empty their wallets and, you know, it wasn't him and it's not me. Uh, we rarely talk about money. We'll be talking about it tonight. Uh, again, necessary part of the thing, but it is rare uh, that we talk about it here. But at the same time, we have to, because we are commanded to teach uh, the whole Word of God. And God has a lot to say about stewardship and giving and, and generosity and things like that. Um, but it was a big dream. He, he dreamed of a day that we would be able to have a hundred acres or more. How many know just we could stop right there? <laughs> That's a pretty, pretty huge dream at the, today's real estate prices, right? So you dreamed of having at least a hundred acres where we could build, build what? Build our congregation, build a sanctuary. And not just a, a sanctuary, but obviously everything that goes along with it, you know, office space and classrooms and, and a fellowship hall of our own where, you know, we could have uh, Shabbat uh, meals and we could have our Pesach uh, gatherings, uh, uh, 
meal and Seder, and, and, and we could just be closer as a family and have ownership uh, of, our, of our own place. He dreamed of a day where on that property, we would build a school and educate our, our, our kids God's way and, and raise them up to be incredible men and women of, of the Most High that would love Elohim, love Avinu, love our Father with all of their heart, soul, and mind and, 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 and serve in the ministry and, and be sent all around the world so that from this little tiny congregation, this little, you know, the little roots that, you know, met in our house way back when and, and then in other people's houses would one day literally impact the world. Also, part of that, you know, he dreamed of maybe having, uh, maybe a nursing home isn't the right, uh, the right, the right term, but like, like a, maybe like an assisted living thing uh, for uh, the, the aging folks at our congregation, or for outsiders to come and a place for them to live to receive uh, proper care. And above and beyond all the normal things you would think that they would receive in a normal assisted living facility, they would have Torah, they would have Messiah, they would have people that love the Lord with all their heart, soul, and mind coming to, to minister to them daily. He dreamed of this hundred acres producing, producing its fruit, yielding its produce, where we could plant fruit trees and, and vineyards and, and all kinds of food. Not that we wanted to be farmers, but he envisioned this as a as a refuge, as a as a, a retreat, a place that we could come not only to worship, but a, a place that we could be fed spiritually, but a place that we could be fed in times of need. The world is spinning out of control. They they still talk about on the news, you know, coming famine, coming famine. And having a place like Rabbi Envision would produce food that could sustain us. He dreamed about having goats and sheep and, and cows. No, oh my? <laughs> well, you know it wouldn't be lions and tigers and bears. They ain't kosher, right? So, so he, he, literally, you know, having, having you know, goats for cows for milk and meat and, and all these things as, a, as a, a place that took care of all of our needs. And that would be a launching place to bless the community. I can't even wrap my head around the price tag of such things. I mean, e easily you're looking at, you know, half a million to 750,000 plus, probably just for the land and probably a whole lot more. So it would be a huge, massive undertaking. Everything is the Lord's timing. God owns everything. He could send somebody, you know, tomorrow to n knock on one of our doors and say, hey, you know, I don't know, I don't know you, but the Lord told me to come by here and take care of a need, and, and, and then it could be blessed. And we know it can happen because he shared uh, experiences from his own life, from his own ministry, long before I, I met him, when he was taking... Uh, one of his ministry groups overseas, and they were short, I believe it was some $50,000. They just didn't have the money. He had nowhere, where, no idea where it would come from. And he talked about how he just spent all night long just crying and calling out to God and, and just on his face before the Lord. And then getting a call the next day or whatever it was at just the right time. You don't know me, but the Lord told me to call. And I'm supposed to give 50,000. It was like the exact amount that he needed. This is the God that we serve. He is a way maker. It's not about 
you know, if it's up, if it's up to what, what we could do, if it's up to what I could do, we all might as well just pack it up. But we're not here on our own strength. And we may have dragged ourselves in tonight, and we may drag ourselves in from time to time when we're, you know, maybe not feeling, you know, as enthusiastic. Maybe the, you know, the work week has us beat down, and we're tired physically and mentally from the cares of the world. But we come here anyway because we know that we serve a great big God. God has done things in my own life that just blow my mind. And while some of the numbers and some of the things we're going to talk about tonight are going to sound crazy, and especially, again, if we're going to look at the natural, you know, sometimes I'm happy. I can't see. And don't get me wrong. I'd give anything to see, like, right now <laughs> and, and keep that sight forever. But there are some times when it's good because it, the physical absence of sight reminds me and teaches me every day. Every day I'm reminded and I'm learning of what it means to trust and have faith and rely. And even though I can't see, everything always works out. God always makes a way. Well, all of my physical needs are always met. And there was a time in my life where, you know, week to week, day to day, I, whew, I wasn't so sure. Things were pretty messed up. I mean, my single days, when, you know, before I met Anna, I'm, I'm a, I am a terrible, <laughs> terrible money manager. So y'all say, praise God, Rabbi Jeff is not the treasurer Shay Stallings is. So we've got somebody competent that knows what he's doing, uh, unlike me. But God has always come through. And in my mind, I, you know, should the Lord tarry, we don't know how much time we have. It's, you know, every time you turn on the news, you think, well, you know, set the hourglass. We're going home soon. But we don't know. We may very well be out of here before I can finish this message, much less, <laughs> you know, proceed with the plans God has put in, in, in our hearts. But it could be a lot longer than we think. And some of us might think, whew, well, that's good. Some of us might say, Oh, Lord, please no. <laughs> Come and get us. But whatever it is, only he knows. We're supposed to, 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 to carry on and press on and work until he comes back. We're supposed to be found <coughs> laboring. We're supposed to be found being at the father's, uh, about the Father's business. So in my mind, maybe you know, this might be a 10-year vision. So what are we going to do in the meantime? How do we get from... From here, meeting, you know, and thank God for Life Point. Thank God for the people here. Thank God uh, for the pastors and the staff that love us and bless us and are patient with us and allow us to, to be in such a, a great place. There's no, right now, in the natural, we can't, we, we, if, if it wasn't for these guys, I don't know where we'd be. Be meeting in living rooms. If we're, if we're lucky, right? So how are we going to get there? I believe what God is putting in my heart is we're going to grow. There, there's, there's no way around it. We're going to have to grow. We can only do so much on our own. But we're going to do something. And we're going to press on. And we're, we're going see God move and I, I can't wait until next week and you see what God's put in, in my heart for ministry missions uh, kind of thing because I, I, I just I just know I just know I just know that that is going to be 
a key that unlocks a door for us. God's blessing will pour out. And however he does it, he's going to do it. One of my desires, one of my visions for the, the interim is sometime in the next year to be able to have our own place. And again, it doesn't make any sense. How are we going to do it? You know, and we, 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 may, we may find a place to lease. But what I would really love to see is for us to have our own multi-use facility that we own. What's a multi-use facility? Well, it's not a church, for one. I can, I can see in my mind's eye, and I don't know where this place is or if it's just a, a, a thing in my head, but, but I can see a strip strip, not a strip mall, but with, with a little plaza, a little business plaza with a number of offices in it where we can take a portion of that building and convert it to a, a storefront church, if you will, a place where we can have a sanctuary where we can meet and have the necessary uh, other rooms to, to, to do what we need to do. It'll be a standalone place. We'll have signage. People will see us, not just stumble across us on the internet, but we'll physically be able to see that we're there. And the other units will be able to rent out. Maybe a dog grooming kind of place or tax prep place or who knows what kind of businesses would be there. And the idea, my, 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 my dream, my heart's desire is to, to have that for this purpose, that the revenue from the rentals would not only pay for the property itself and the utilities, but also, I believe, very well could could pay other operating costs, salaries, and and and, and other things. So that way, we get to a place where when an offering is taken up, when you pay your tithes, when you pay your offerings, that it's, it's not that we're, you know, we're giving to Rabbi Jeff or we're giving to, you know, support Rebecca Kim or we're giving for, you know, the light bill or we're giving to, you know, pay the insurance. I want to get to a place where when we give, it's going to ministry. And don't get me wrong. The traditional model, you know, where, you know, the portion of everything pays for those things and then a portion goes to, to, to ministry. It's all ministry. But I just really, it's my heart's desire to get to a place where you guys know that everything that you give is impacting directly 100% the kingdom of God without having to deal with overhead. And I believe we can do it. I've looked a little bit in Hickory, just as an example, there was a number of places that, you know, without going there and looking at them, just from the description, would serve this purpose. Multi-unit places, even, even warehouse kind of facilities and two of them were right around 400,000 and one of them I believe was 600,000 and it came with acreage came with the parking lot came with all of these things and according to my realtor commercial properties would be 20% down so you're looking at 80 to a hundred thousand dollars 80,000 would cover getting into the property and there'd be money left over to you know make payments and, and conversions and, and all the things that we would need to do. Jeff, you're talking crazy. <laughs> yes, I am, because I'm not talking about me. I'm not, I can't do it. I don't know if anyone here can do that. I, I'm, I'm, I don't know, we're, we're all, you know, we're all just working and whatever. But again, it's not us, it's not up to us to make it happen. God will make it happen. Whether, whether we're here and filling this place out or whether 
you know, we're, we're leasing a place, whether, uh, you know, God ha ha, you know, ha has something like what we're talking about. The stepping stones to get from where we are to where God ultimately, I know, is calling us to be, should he tarry. I want to look at a couple of uh, scriptures. And uh, we're going to be looking. This comes from Parish of Terumah. If uh, somebody can go to uh, ex, 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 wait a minute. Yeah, it's Exodus uh, chapter 25. We're going to be looking at verses uh, just 1 through 7 there. Who wants Exodus 25, 1 through 7? Yeah, or, yeah. or, yeah, actually it might be 1. Yeah, 1 through 7. And then uh, Exodus chapter 36, that's going to be verses 7 through 12, I believe. You got it? You said Exodus 36. 36. Um, and then we're going to need someone to take a few verses in Malachi chapter 3. Who wants that one? Okay. Um, so, and we're going to be looking at this. And, and this isn't, the, oh my gosh, Jeff just lost his mind. Here he goes. He's going to start shaking us down. He is the Italian rabbi after all. No, 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 no. Relax. But I just want us to see, number one, what's required of us. Because like we talked last week, uh, we all have ownership. This is, this is our uh, congregation. Uh, you know, Aaron, this congregation belongs to you. You know, June, this belongs to you. Debbie, this belongs to you. We can go through every single person here. And you, sh you, you, you can say, this is my congregation. Because it is. This doesn't belong to anything. This isn't, this is, I mean, it, it's, it's mine just as much as it's yours, but we're not doing this for me. This isn't my thing. It's not, this doesn't, you know. It's a standalone 501c3. We're, we're a recognized entity in and of itself now. But we all have a responsibility one to, one to another to serve one another in various ways like we discussed last week. And, you know, we are not big on talking about the finances, but again, it, it's, it's a necessary part. And... Um, Let's just look at the, who's got the, it was Aaron has 25. Yep. All right, let me get those verses. Like. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the people of Israel that they take for me a contribution. From every man whose heart moves him, you shall receive the contribution from him. And this is the contribution you shall receive from him. <clears throat> Gold, silver, and bronze, blue and purple, and scarlet yarn, and fine twine linen, goat linen, goat's hair, and ram skins, goat skins, acacia wood. Okay, now, uh, Mr. Janik, you got 36? I do. All right, so everything between what Aaron just read in 25 <clears throat> and what Jan is about to read, it's all, it's all the details in the middle. So this is one continuous story. Go, go ahead, Jan. So you said 36, what was the uh, I think 7 through 12. Okay. For the material they had was sufficient. Uh, back, back up like a back verse up. or two. Okay. Again, everything from between uh, what Aaron read in ver uh, chapter 25 to what Janet just read in 36 is all the details for the construction, for the ark, for the menorah, for the, for the mishkan itself, the building, if you will, the sanctuary. 
all the details. And I want to point out at no point, this is what I love about this portion, this parsha, okay? This is the model for giving. You know, I haven't watched TBN in forever, probably 10 years, so I have no idea. Maybe they've changed. Maybe it's, it's not like this anymore. But last I saw, you couldn't turn TV on without, you know, some, you know, some headshot of some guy staring at you, you know, telling you about the seed. And the seed, you know, and God is going to bless you. It's anointing on this amount of offering, and you've got to give a thousand dollars. And if you don't better do it now, before, before, you know, we go off the air and all of this nonsense, it's, uh, it's manipulation. And, uh, you know, God's, God says it's akin to witchcraft. But here, there was none of that. Moses simply told the people, this is what God's commanded us to do, and this is what we need. And then we hear about the instructions on, you know, what God told Moses each step. And then the next thing we hear, the people were, were bringing offerings daily to the point where they had more than they needed and they had to tell them, knock it off, stop, no more. Something you never, <laughs> I can't imagine is ever uttered from any pulpit anywhere. But there's no coercion, there's no manipulation, there's no, no weirdness, there's no awkwardness. It's just the word, this is what God says. And, and it, it was free will, God loves a cheerful giver. You know that scripture. And it was in the heart of the people to give. So first I wanna let everyone know, it, you know, when it comes to what should I give, what's expected of me, there's nothing expected of you. It's between you and God always and forever <clears throat> amen it is not about equal sacrifice well so and so gave this much or i heard you know uh, you know i i bet you so and so was able to do whatever but i only got whatever remember what yeshua said about the widow with the two mites we had the rich guys coming in you know parading in and you know probably spiking their big old offerings down and big old bags of gold and Yeshua was just cool. He's just sitting back, just watching with the disciples. And then along comes his widow with the two mice, the two, two, two pennies by probably today's standards are maybe worth less than that. He even put two cents in. And Yeshua said, I tell you the truth. That woman has given more than all of these. She didn't give out of her abundance gave out of her need and it was the sacrifice of those those two pennies those two mites that blessed the king of the universe so much so, so rule number one don't ever 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 feel pressure by me by anyone sitting in this sanctuary now or in the future ever to give any set amount or with set frequency or whatever. It's between you and the Almighty. That's, that's number one. Number two, if we're doing what we're, what we're supposed to be doing, we are commanded to, to bring a tithe. That's a tenth of our of our in, uh, of our income and bring offerings doesn't really tell us there was a teaching that i did with rabbi cliff forever ago again we were meeting in my house uh and, and you know we don't really want to know <laughs> what that total came out to but again it's it's it was more of like the guideline if you will but the 10 percent for sure we know and the offerings we know it was it was it's, it's all over the Torah. It's all over the New Covenant. Who's got Malachi chapter 3? I think it was uh, verse um, uh, like 5 through 10 maybe. What does mm -hmm. verse 5 sound like? 
And I will come near to you, judgment, and I will bring swift witness against the sorcerer. Ah, uh, that's not. <laughs> go, go to the next verse. <laughs> Seven or eight. <laughs> just, just keep reading. We'll, we'll what about eight? Try it. Will a man rob God? That, that's what I was looking for. Sorry. Will a man rob God and he have robbed me? But you say, wherein have we robbed thee in tithe and offering? You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. This was one of those scriptures that I, I've told you guys in the past. That I don't recommend you pray this way, but I had gotten so frustrated in my, my personal finances. I'd struggled so much. Just, just everything was a disaster. Hearing all these crazy guys on you know Christian television telling me, give, 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 give. And uh, this was the, the scripture that I, I'm 99% I'm sure this was the scripture that kind of just pushed me over the edge. And this whole test me now thing. And when I said, fine, I don't know why money is so important to you. You want it? Here, take the whole thing. I can't do anything with it anyway. I literally gave my entire paycheck. Which, again, I'm not recommending anybody do this. But praise God. God is a God of love and grace and mercy. Can I get an amen? But the point point is that even though my my demeanor and my uh, my methods <laughs> were less than desirable my heart was in the right place I was desperate for God I was desperate to find out what is going on, what, what is the meaning of all this and this is the one area in scripture where he says to test me does a man rob God well the tithe isn't an offering. That's different. Offerings, that's what you give God from your heart. Because you want to. Because you want to be a blessing. Because you want to see the kingdom advance. Because you want to see widows and orphans taken care of. Because you want to see, you know, God's work be done. But the tithe, it belongs to him, he says. It all belongs to him, but... He's serious. He wants his he wants his tithe, and you know he'll get it one way or the other, right? We we, we can give it voluntarily and reap a blessing, or you know, you know things happen and, and, and we suffer loss. You know the whole Deuteronomy twenty eight thing that you know the, the the church loves to quote. You know, oh I'm blessed, blessed coming in, blessed going out, blessed, 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 blessed. It's all about money, and they try to twist it about you know, to, to be a money thing, and you know, if you give this much, God's going to bless you this much back, like he's some kind of cosmic banker, or uh, cosmic, uh, you know, raffle, or whatever you want to call it. It's not the case. These people that quote Deuteronomy 28 all the time would just love to, to leave out the part about uh, where it says, if you are careful to keep all of my commands, then you will be blessed. And then they stop before it says, but if you do not, then you'll be cursed with a curse. And they leave that part out conveniently enough. But I said I'll have to say this. It, you know, financially, we will be 100% um, transparent going forward. We just had our first uh, um, <coughs> board of directors meeting this past Sunday. And... Um, and in case y'all don't know, you know, just I'll let you know they, you know, it's a formality thing. It's a it's a legal thing for the state. Uh, I'm I'm set up as the the president. We got Jimmy Hunt, our elder, is a vice president. Shay Stallings is our secretary. I mean, our treasurer. Anna is the acting uh, secretary right now. Uh, and then we got Rebets and Kim and Aaron are uh, are. Uh, non-officer members of the board 
so you know who's uh, who, who's really <laughs> kind of you know the glue holding this together and 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 helping me and uh, doing God's work. Uh, so we will do quarterly meet, uh, meetings um, of the board every uh, January, April, July, and October. Uh, at the very least, uh, we'll have an annual uh, meeting for the congregation. I don't know how we're going to actually do it. I don't really want to take a service uh, for that. Uh, we'll find another way to make it happen, or we'll make a report and deliver it via email or you know, for those of you who you know maybe don't do email, have printed copies. Uh, for those of you who are members, uh, we'll, we'll do that in January for certain. But any time going forward, if you have questions about the finances and what's happening, uh, talk to, to any of us uh, on the board. And if uh, anyone doesn't know, we will find out. Uh, but we're kind of set up a little differently because again, we are trying to uh, remain in the Assemblies of God, and we are required uh, to be set up a certain way, uh, certain percentages uh, going to building funds, certain percentages going to, um, you know, ministries and, and, and missions and, and benevolence, and, you know, it, it, it's, all, it, it's all their guidelines. Um, so in, right now, you know, we, we have been a situation, again, because we're so small and other factors where basically everything that was coming in was going right back out and, 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 and we didn't have um, any excess. Um, but we, we've kind of changed things around and it's, it's at a sacrifice uh, to, to some other things, but, but we, we do have these funds now uh, that are, are actually being set up or have been set up this week and deposits are going in and uh, being, being separated into these things. And we'll talk more about that uh, next week. Uh, again, when we talk about the ministries and, and the missions uh, that we are uh, going to uh, start supporting. I, I'm so excited about that because again, I know God is going to bless that. And I know that as we begin to, to see, you know, Habakkuk or Habakkuk uh, chapter two, and it, it's, a, it's talking about something a little bit different, but it has application here in that, you know, um, that we are to, to uh, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he who sees it may run for the vision is for an appointed time, and it will not tarry. The Lord will bring it to pass. And this vision that God, you know, put in Rabbi Cliff's heart and uh, and mine, I, I I I know, I know we are going to grow, and I I know uh, again, it's it's hard. Change is hard. Change is weird. Strange. You know, we're going into unfamiliar territory. I know some, some of us, a lot of us, probably maybe all of us, kind of wish we could just keep it just the way it is. I mean, we're family, we're mishpoka, we're okay, we're doing all right. And I get it. And in, in some respect, I'm, I'm with you on that. But at the same time, I, I want you all to understand and, and know that, you know, Rabbi Jeff isn't trying to build an empire. Rabbi Jeff isn't trying to make a name for himself. Like that casting crown song, you know, Jesus, Yeshua, is the only name to remember. And I love that song. And it's my heart. I could care less if anybody knows who I am. But what I do care about is that because of what God's called me to do, along with each and every one of you, each and every one of you is a partner in this. You're part of it. You're part of the body. We're all part of the body. We, the body cannot function. With, if one of us leaves, if one of us, you know, quits, if one of us is, is cut off, we, it's, it's not good. We need each other, all of us. Me included, I need all of you. I 
just know that as we step out in faith with this the, the clear mission that, that, that God has laid before us, and as we start to, to honor his word and as we start to submit to the authority, that's, this is the other thing too, you know, Romans 13. Every authority on earth is established by God. You know, we're, we're doing things that are, quite honestly, costing us money we've, we, we haven't done before. We're doing things in a different way. IRS uh, compliance is a huge thing. I don't know if y'all can tell this just by looking at me, but I am way too fragile for prison. So, so I am, you know, we are making sure we are 100% compliant with federal, state, and local expectations and requirements. And the sad fact is, it costs money. But we're commanded to submit to authority. We want to be part of the Assemblies of God. We, we, we have been under another, you know, Blue Thread Ministries, and then ultimately under uh, the Assemblies of God. But as a standalone congregation there's 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 expectations now that we have to meet so we're setting up the budget in the way that that they say so things are, are not really comfortable for me i don't like making some of the changes i've i've been forced to make i don't i don't can i can i say not every part of ministry is enjoyable <laughs> the ministering part i love the business side oh my goodness I could do without it, but again, it's part of being a shepherd. It's part of what I'm called to do, and I'm 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 doing what what the Lord has uh, for me, and I know it's going to be a blessing to all of us. God is going to use this congregation to do great things. Rabbi Cliff didn't spend ten years, give or take, you know, his blood, sweat, and tears, countless hours of prayer. And struggle to set the foundation for this if you thought it was a waste of time or if you thought it couldn't happen he said often hey you know I'm okay I'm okay you know if 10 is all we ever have and that's all God ever ever has and you know again like Messiah prayed not my will but yours be done father he was good with it and I'm good with it. If, we, if, if, if the reality is we spin our wheels and we, 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 you know, do what we're commanded to do and the results that we think should happen don't seem to happen, I'm okay with it. But I know the God whom we serve. And I know what Habakkuk says, that it's for an appointed time. Abraham and Sarah didn't believe they, in the natural. This doesn't make any sense. A nation coming out of us? We're crazy old. But the angel said, next year, at the appointed time. Everything with God is time. I'd like to sit here tonight and tell you, Hey, I know on this date, this is going to happen. On this date, that's going to happen. I, I don't. But God knows, and we will trust him, and we will uh, press on, and we will see amazing things happen. So what does this have to do with Parasha Noah? Which is chapter 6, verse 8 of uh, Genesis all the way through uh, chapter 11. Somewhere in chapter 11. I want to say it's verse 27 or so. The story of Noah, you guys know it very well. But chapter uh, 5 into 6 from Bereshit, last week's parasha. You know, we have God creating everything. We go through the six days of creation and God says it was good, it was good, it was good, it was very good. Everything started out good. But at the end of that 
portion of, of, of scripture, what happened? Everything fell apart. To the point where God says that every inclination of man's heart is only evil all the time. And he regretted creating them. And then along comes chapter 6. But Noah found favor in God's sight. He was a man perfect in his generation. He wasn't looking for fame. He wasn't looking for fortune. He wasn't looking to be talked about through the millennia. He was a man that got an instruction from God and he did it, even though it seemed nutty, I'm sure. He got mocked, he got ridiculed. For all we know, he may have been threatened. If you know anything about the parasha on the deeper levels, there's a lot more than meets the eye in this parasha. But yet God used this one man and his family to not only <laughs> save all of humanity, to save all of creation, but to eventually bring about the lineage of the people that would see the coming of Messiah. One man who loved God would not bow the knee and was crazy enough to do what God said. And he changed the world forever. Tonight, we have a sanctuary where every person who is in here loves the Lord. Like Rabbi Cliff used to always say, I know you love the Lord, because you're here. There's a million other things you could do tonight, but you choose to be here. All of you love God. And we are told by Messiah that such as in the days of Noah, so will it be before the coming of the Son of Man. And we are there, boys and girls, we are there. Joshua pointed out, man, I can't even watch anything on TV. Everything is just evil and corrupt and messed up. It's awful. Everywhere you go, everything. We're surrounded by a generation where more and more, every thought, every inclination of the heart is for evil only. We love the Lord and God is going to use us to build something, whether it's physically building or building his kingdom by reaching out of this building and touching the world with the gospel and doing things that touch and bless the heart of God, we are about to see an amazing outpouring. We're looking for end time revival. It's going to start with people just like us. And I believe we are going to see and do amazing things together. Just one last thing on, on the whole finance side of things. Just so you know, we, um, for those that give online, you'll see there is a, um, you have options. There's like a, a general fund, and there's building, and then there's mission. Are the three categories you could designate your giving to. Remember, your, your tithes and offerings that you've always kind of done, you would click the general. If God puts on your heart something extra above and beyond that, and puts in your heart, like you put in the hearts of people in Exodus 25, 
if he puts it, not me, but if he puts it in your heart to do something extra for missions or for the building fund, then you can do it that way. If you're a person that writes the check, just, uh, just in the memo, uh, ex you know, one of those words, general, uh, or if it's tithe and offering, it'll go to the general, but you could write down building or mission and we'll know uh, what to do. And next week, it is gonna be a multimedia kind of day. We've got the videos and stuff to show you uh, that are gonna bless your heart. And we, you will see exactly what God is calling us to do. And then you'll understand that